Hi Chosen Few Expats, welcome back. If you're new to our channel, thank you for joining us. When moving abroad, people tend to look at cost of living, can I get a job, and things like that, and with good reason. But one thing that's overlooked sometimes is the economy and the economic stability of a country. So when it comes to that, we'll tell you why Panama should be very, very high on your list in this video. So when looking at the economy in Panama, you're going to find that Panama is very economically stable. It actually ranks ninth out of 32 countries in the Americas by the Index of Economic Freedom and is number 55 in the world ahead of countries like Portugal at number 56, which is also another popular expat destination. Um, when it comes to banking, Panama is well known for its banks. It's known as the Switzerland of Central America. Um, a lot of people keep their money there. The banks are very safe. Panama ranks in the top 14 countries in the world in terms of the world's safest banks. Um, you actually also don't have to be charged any tax on the interest um, that you make when you um, have your money in a Panama bank. So that interest is tax-free. So that's another great advantage to living in, um, in Panama. Also, the rate of inflation is a lot lower than in the United States. If you look back over the last four years, the rate of inflation in the U.S. is increasing while it's actually been decreasing in Panama. So there's typically a difference of about one and a half to two percentage points in inflation when you compare Panama to the United States. So um, that in and of itself is a big advantage. Um, when you look at the cost of living already being cheaper in Panama, that just means um, with the inflation being lower that your dollar is going to be able to be stretched that much further. Um, so one other big advantage that Panama has of their economy is the Cologne Free Trade Zone. Now, most people may not realize, and I didn't know this myself until I researched it, that um, the Free Trade Zone in Cologne, which is about an hour north of Panama City, is the second largest free trade zone in the world behind Hong Kong. So um, what this does is it attracts a lot of businesses, um, and you really have to start thinking about um, the COVID environment that we're in and in a post-COVID environment which economies um, of these countries can survive that hit, can take that hit. And Panama is well positioned to do so um, because of this free trade zone. Um, they offer a lot of advantages to companies who come in. Basically, they don't charge them any um, import taxes on the products that they keep there. The stipulation is that they do have to export 60% of the products that they do bring in um, with, within a year's time. Um, but they also only charge 5% um, on dividends <clears throat> and then um, also they don't charge anything for those companies to export to other countries. They, the only requirement there is that they hire five Panamanians um, and a lot of these companies obviously going to hire a lot more Panamanians than that. Um, so since the um, Cologne Free Trade Zone was started in 1948, it's been a boon to the economy and it keeps it very stable. Um, in addition to that, it works in conjunction with the other free trade zone um, in Panama there's actually three of them, but the other main one is the Panama Pacifico, which is in Panama City. So that one is going to be on the Pacific side of the country. So basically a company could have um, a business set up in the Cologne Free Trade Zone, and they can also have a warehouse set up in the Panama Pacifico pre, uh, Free Trade Zone, and they can ship product between the two because it's only an hour, hour apart. So what that does is that gives you very wide availability to be able to ship anywhere in the world, which is one reason why Panama refers to itself as Puente del Mundo, Corazón del Universo, which is bridge of the world and heart of the universe. When you look at it geographically, and we covered this in some other videos, the location of Panama is pretty optimal. It's the southernmost country in Central America, and so you basically have North America to the north and South America to the south. And so by it being bordered on both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, which are only 50 miles apart, if you're going to leave from the Pacific Ocean, that gives you access to ship goods to, you know, Mexico, all the way to Asia, any of the countries that are on the Pacific coast of South America, such as Ecuador, Peru, Argentina, Chile, um, countries like that. And then if you're going to go in the other direction from the Atlantic, that gives you access to shipping um, to the U.S., to Europe. Um, and they're even looking at um, building some relationship with more uh, countries in Africa. Um, because of how easy it is to access um, um, Panama from there. So one other thing with this free trade zone is that the government offers um, businesses 
reduce prices on land to build in that zone, to build their companies there, because of course it's gonna help the economy and it's gonna help the people there. One other thing is that they lock in, whatever the terms of the agreement are, are locked in for 10 years. So in cases where there's, um, you know, something happens and the, the government just can't go changing the terms of the agreement that they had with that company. So that's very, very much incentivizing companies to come to Panama. So for example, if you came to Panama and your deal was signed two years ago, regardless of whatever happened, even with COVID, um, you're good for another eight years on whatever the um, terms of that agreement are. So that's something that's very, very attractive to, to a lot of uh, companies that are coming in. And the other thing to keep in mind is that Panama also boasts the, um, the first transcontinental railroad. So there's a railway that also goes from Cologne to Panama City um, in much the same way the Panama Canal does. So a lot of these companies, you can just either truck um, you know, your goods from, from one free trade zone down to the other, from one coast down to the other, or you can put it on a train and get it down there that way. Um, and that's, you know, if you don't want to pay to go through the canal. So that's another benefit to um, the companies that decide to set up in Panama. So um, they're getting good business off of that. Um, the other thing, of course, that contributes to the economic stability of Panama, as we all know and have heard of, is the Panama Canal. Um, like I mentioned and covered in our uh, Why I Moved to Panama Part 2 video, it did surprise me that Panama generates $2.6 billion of revenue annually from the Panama Canal. Um, and they started an expansion project on the canal uh, several years ago, which was recently completed. Um, it's about a $5.4 billion expansion um, that basically allows them to get much larger cargo ships. The much larger modern car cargo ships that we have today can come through the canal. Whereas in the past, um, you know, there was a size limit there due to the original, to, due to the size of the original passage. So they created another passage that's even wider where you can get a lot of these large cargo ships through there and they can charge them um, even more higher tolls, all, all the way up to $600,000 to come through that canal one time. Um, and so that's a fee that they would much rather pay than have to sail 45 days all the way around the southern tip of South America. That's 45 more days of fuel. You have to feed your crew. You have to pay them. And then also in addition to that, that's six additional weeks that your product is gonna be on the water on the way to somewhere, as opposed to in a store being sold and making money. So a lot of people will gladly pay that um, high fee to get through the Panama Canal. So it creates a lot of economic stability for the country. I mean, the canal um, is about 10% of Panama's gross domestic product. Um, and even through this situation with COVID, you know, people have still been shipping goods and everything. So Panama, of course, has taken an economic hit just like every other country. But when you have things like the second largest free trade zone in the world and the Panama Canal, you know, it can, it can create some level of stability even through tough times. So, I mean, these are the types of things that um, people really don't necessarily think about first when they think about moving to a country. But it's something that really, really um, should be considered. Um, <clears throat> and so... The other thing to keep in mind with this is that Panama basically has no enemies, right? Uh, because everybody needs to make use of this canal. Um, so Panama basically does not have an army. Um, that kind of went away um, with the situation with um, Noriega um, to kind of do away with any possibility of a military coup. So after that took place, you know, I think they kind of took a look at things and said, you know what, man, you know, we really don't even need an army anyway because we don't really have any enemies. Because if you think about it, everybody needs that canal, right? So if Panama, if somebody were to upset them and they were to uh, cut off use of a particular country from using that canal, that's going to hurt their economy big time. Um, so nobody wants to make enemies with them. Everything is love and peace um, with them. And so what they're doing right now is just continuing to try to grow that business and expand that and make everyone more aware of all of the advantages that they have with the um, Cologne Free Trade Zone and the canal in terms of coming to Panama and bringing their business to Panama. So um, even during the 2009 crisis, their gross domestic product still grew at a rate of 4% that year. And typically their gross domestic product grows at a rate of about four to 5%. 
um, which like I said, for a, for a country of its size, as Panama is a small country, it's only 4.3 million people, but for a country of its size per capita, um, it's doing very, very well. It's very, very well positioned to continue to do, um, to continue to do well economically. Um, so with that, we just want to give you some information about the, um, the economic stability of Panama. So please do subscribe, ring the notification bell so that you can be notified of our future videos. Also, leave us any comments below. Let us know what other topics you would like to see covered um, in future videos. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.